chapter 12, lesson 3, is about addition and subtraction of fractions. Um, again, in grade 2, the kids were only asked to add and subtract fractions that already had the same denominator. So now, we are teaching them how to add fractions that have different denominators. However, we need to remember and teach our kids that you can only add or subtract fractions if they have the same denominator. Okay, this is called common denominator. So, which means we need to teach our kids how to come up with equivalent fractions. So, that's the last lesson. Okay, um, we also need to remind our kids that when we're subtracting, the bigger fraction has to be before the smaller fraction. How will we know if it's bigger or smaller? We use the last lesson strategy. Okay, so which means the problems that we will be doing comes from different pages, again, from the book. Okay, we're starting with page 78. Okay, on page 78, it says, find the sum of, this is number three, find the sum of two-fifth and three-tenth. Okay, so what we want to do is rewrite 2 fifth plus 3 tenth. Okay, then we rewrite it like that. Okay, so the first step is to find the common denominator. And what's common here would be 10. Okay, so that means we need to make them both 10. So how do you teach your child to come up with that? What you do is you have them count the, with a smaller. So this might be helpful, right? The the tables, table of 5 is 5 and then 10. Since that's the same, then that means the common denominator must be 10. Okay, so which means to get from 5 to 10, we multiply by 2, which means this is times 2, which means this is 4 tenth, and then this will be 3 tenth. Okay, so which means if I put those together, that will be 7 tenth. Now, all final answers must always be written in simplified or reduced form. So, which means in this case, we can't simplify because nothing divides both. So, that means we're done for that problem. Now, on page 82, we will be discussing problem number 5. Okay, so it says, find the difference between 5 sixth and 7 twelfth. Okay, so this one has a bar model, but again, we can't depend on bar models all the time because not all, all problems will have bar models. When they're word problems, we need the bar models. Okay, so which means it says difference between five-sixths and Seven twelfth. Okay, so which means we have to figure out first which one is bigger. So if we multiply across and multiply across, that might be a little bit of a struggle for the kids. So another way that you can do is the common denominator here is 12. So if the common denominator is 12, then that means this will be 10, which means this is the bigger fraction than this. So again, whatever is most comfortable for the kids, that's what we want to teach. So if it's too difficult to multiply, the next step is to find the common denominator. So clearly, if I count 6, 12, that would be times 2, so that's 10. Okay, so the formula will therefore be, okay, so this will be 12, and this is already 12, so which means this is still 7. Okay, so I need to multiply by 2, which means I need to multiply by 2, which means this is 10. So when I take away, this will be 3 over 12. Okay, however, this is not in simplified or reduced form. We know that both of those can be divided by 3. So therefore, I'm going to divide and divide by 3. So if I divide by 3, that's 1. If I divide by 3, that's 4. 
making the difference between 5 sixths and 7 twelfths to be 1 fourth. Okay, and finally, uh, problem number 6 on page, the same page, says find the difference between, again, difference between 2 thirds and 5 ninth. Okay, so here, it's a little bit easier to cross multiply. So this is 18 and this is 15. So 18 clearly is greater than the 15. So that means this will be 2 thirds minus 5 ninth. Okay, so counting by threes, I know that I'll hit 9. So the common denominator must be 9. And then I multiply that by 3, which means I got to multiply this by 3 as well. So that makes it 6, and that makes this 5. So our final answer is 6 minus 5 is 1, and we keep the same denominator. So again, when we are adding or subtracting fractions, they must have the same denominator. If it's hard for the kids to come up with a lowest common denominator mentally, have them list the, mul the numbers that the multiplication tables of the, uh, the denominator. That will make it less stress for them and then they can match what the common denominator is. That concludes lesson three of chapter 12, which concludes the chapter as well. See you in